the great sortation is really happening and accelerating after the census. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. I first talked about the great sortation in April of 2022. I talked about Americans wishing to live under simpatico state governments. Then, shortly before Christmas, came fresh evidence from the Census Bureau of this sortation. But that sortation would appear to be one-sided as people move out of blue states and into red states. Put another way, they are moving out of the United States of Canada into Jesus land. If this continues, tensions between the two groups of people will actually rise higher, high enough, maybe, to boil over. Before I share those census data and explain how the tensions could come to a boil, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today. It's white because the design doesn't lend itself to a black background. Depicts an eagle and says, Eagles fly alone. Pigeons need a flock. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. First, a review. On April 3rd, 2022, the New York Times published an editorial, to which I've left a link in the description, highlighting a division of state laws along party lines. The Times guessed even then that the Supreme Court <coughs> would overrule its Roe v. Wade decision that made it legal nationwide to uh, end a pregnancy. When any such overrule happened, red states would move to outlaw the procedure, while blue states would codify a right to it. Nor would this kind of operation be the only cause of such a divide in state laws. Alternative lifestyles were already becoming a flashpoint, with red states outlawing certain practices, mainly including normalizing them in school, aimed at spreading such lifestyles, and blue states protecting those practices. Election integrity made another flashpoint, with most red states moving to restore it as blue states moved to discard it. The Times seemed to predict that liberals would move from red states to blue states, but even they had to admit that conservatives were already moving the other way. They quoted Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida as crediting Governor Gavin Newsom of California with a better job as a U-Haul salesman. The point was salient. Already, it cost three times to rent a U-Haul truck to move from Los Angeles to New Braunfels, Texas, as to move the other way. And it still does, though not necessarily for U-Haul's new moving boxes. The U-Haul truck finder doesn't lie. Check it out for yourselves. I've left a link in the description. On December 22, 2022, the Census Bureau issued a press release describing its, and I, I quote, vintage 2022 national and state population estimates, close quote. Now, why they call it vintage, I don't know. After all, human beings aren't bunches of grapes waiting to be pressed into wine. Anyway, I've left links in the description to both pages from the Census Bureau. The Bureau measured total populations and population changes in the United States, the several states, the District of Columbia, and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. From April 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2022. Furthermore, they measured three different net measures of change. International migration is immigrants minus emigrants. If that's negative, it means more people 
are leaving the country than entering. A state of affairs we are not likely to see. Domestic migration means move-ins minus move-outs. The Bureau measured that by region of the country, south, northwest, midwest, uh, northeast, midwest, and west, and by state. Again, if that's a negative, it means people are moving out more than in. Finally, there's natural change. That means births minus deaths. If that's a negative, it means the women of a, a childbearing age aren't having the children necessary to replace people who die. The news release reported population change nationally and by region and by state and Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. The data support these conclusions. America as a whole gained 0.4% more people, slightly more than a million and a quarter. That includes about a million net immigrants and about a quarter million more births than deaths. Therefore, Senator Charles M. Schumer of New York was wrong to say we need immigrants because our population is dying. At least so far, Americans are replacing those of us who die by having more children. We see a birth every nine seconds and a death every ten seconds. But Christy Wilder, a bureau demographer, also admitted that net, migra net, net immigration had rebounded. Of course it did with put resident Biden's let them in policies. Next, I'm going to talk about regional winners and losers. Before I do, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is, is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You're not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, unexpected changes in life, have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins, or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides. Either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a, build a legacy for your future. Yeah. The South and West both gain residents, the South a lot more. The South got most of the domestic move-ins along with the immigrants. The West seemed to have about 233,000 immigrants coming in and about the same number of people moving out domestically. The West gained people by having more people born than dying. The Northeast and Midwest both lost people. Why? Because people moved out. Texas and Florida saw the biggest population gains from people moving in from outside the country and from elsewhere in the country. Texans added people by having more babies. Florida did not. Florida is retirement central for the country. And those people, well, they first go to Florida and then they die. All 50 states receive more immigrants. Emigration from the United States is very rare. In addition, 26 states and Washington, D.C. had more births than deaths. Now, these were spread across the board. But the biggest gainer from natural increase was Texas. Puerto Rico is, quite simply, dying a slow death. People are leaving Puerto Rico, and deaths outnumber births. So Stephen Sondheim's West Side Story reflects a reality that no longer holds. Remember Anita singing, always the population growing? No more. Beyond that, the largest consistent driver of population increases in some states and decreases in others is domestic migration. People are moving from state to state, and this change is not a dynamic equilibrium. The net of migration is out of blue states and in 
into red states. So what does this mean for the great sortation? First, to repeat, the United States could easily maintain and even grow its total population without admitting all comers. Senator Schumer, you're a liar. Second, the blue states are definitely losing people to the red states. In some states, the move-outs even outnumber the sum of immigrants and the births above replacement. Other states are simply trending to immigrants only, i.e. replacement, replacement of their populations. These trends have accelerated after the census. For that reason, the blue states will have ac excess representation in proportion to their numbers in the House of Representatives. Therefore, they will also have excess strength in the Electoral College. The overrepresentation will be more, most acute in the presidential election of 2028 and midterms 2030. Furthermore, the conduct of the 2030 census will be critical. Without a doubt, the Democratic Party will want to overstate the population of the blue states if they can. Otherwise, they face another round of heavy losses of House seats and presidential electoral votes in 2032. More to the point, the blue states are already suffering financially and will suffer even more. The red states will prosper and Texas and a few others will positively thrive. Inevitably, the Democrats, if they flip the House again and keep the state and the White House will propose the ultimate. They will propose to bail out the blue states with federal tax monies. At that point, all eyes will turn to the Supreme Court. The attorneys general of all the red states will move to enjoin any such bailout program. They, they move to stop the Biden student loan forgiveness program and the rescission of Title 42. The court has enjoined both initiatives and set each case for oral argument. If Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel A. Alito are still alive at the time, then the bailout plan will stop. Those two men are 74 and 72 years old, respectively. In theory, they could still live. Unlike Thurgood Marshall in 1992, Clarence Thomas is not old or falling apart. Neither is Sam Alito. Their closest allies on the court, meaning Barrett, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh, are even younger. Of the liberals, only Jackson is younger than any of those three, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, to be specific. Barrett is younger than anyone else on the court. But already, someone tried to remove Brett Kavanaugh from the planet after the great leak of Dobbs versus Jackson women's. Did someone actually do that to Antonin Scalia? We'll never know. But... Some Democrats have lately used rhetoric suggesting that the court and the planet would be better without Thomas and or Alito in them. If those two justices are not on the court when the blue state bailout plan comes before it, then that plan will stand. And if it does, Texas will pass its Texan bill to form a secession study committee. And then that second civil war that Democrats are actually fretting about will be more likely. And it's bitterly ironic for the Democrats to fret about their opponents starting a civil war. Just remember, they started the first one. Republicans had to finish it. Link in the description of the article to that New York Times editorial, to the Census Bureau news release and report, to the U-Haul truck finder, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsilverlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to my earlier video about the Great Sortation and two other videos that I've done that I have mentioned in passing today. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another Declaration of Truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.